Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking about what Emily Bronte means to me as part of the new Making Thunder Roar Emily Bronte exhibition which is happening at the Bronte Parsonage Museum this year. You may know that I am the Bronte Society Young Ambassador and as my role this year I am making sponsored videos for the Parsonage and for the museum and this is one of those videos. I recently got to go to Haworth to the museum and look around the new exhibition which I absolutely loved and I really Really wanted to share that with you today to show some behind the scenes looks at the exhibition and to tell you all the details so that you can find out for yourself. The theme of the exhibition this year is Making Thunder Roar which is a quotation from The Common Reader by Virginia Woolf and what I really love about this year's exhibition is that it combines real life Bronte artefacts with current artists and figures in literature and the Bronte world, all from really big fans of the Brontes, which I loved about it. There are various things on display in the exhibition, but my favourites were definitely the diary papers, which are tiny little pieces of writing that Emily and Anne wrote together when they were growing up and also when they were older too, about their lives, their everyday lives, and I love that. And for me, it was a dream come true seeing them because I've seen them in in pictures and I've seen them written out in books before but to see the actual things right in front of you is just amazing and you can't imagine somebody writing that but at the same time you can see Emily writing them in your head so I loved them. I also loved the very intimate details of Emily's life such as her stockings on display and when you see them you can't imagine somebody wearing them and that is what I really loved about the exhibition is that I know Emily in my head, I know my version of her, so to see her items and to see the stuff that she wrote and to see things that she would have used every day, that is what humanises her and what makes her not just one of the Brontes, but a Bronte and Emily Bronte, who was just as valid as Charlotte and Anne, or for example, Branwell and Mariah and Elizabeth, the two older Bronte sisters who died very young. And I think that exhibition does a really good job this year of focusing on Emily as an individual and not just the collective Bronte. So what does Emily Bronte mean to me? That is a very big question that even if I was here for five hours, I don't think I could get to the root of because we have so little of her life existing in the objects we have and the writing we have, it's very easy to create our own picture of who Emily Bronte was and who she still is and to adapt her to however you are yourself. So for me, Emily Bronte is shy, she's reserved, she doesn't really like people because these are the qualities that I have for myself and so they're instantly the ones that I gravitate towards. My Emily Bronte also loves nature, she loves being outside and she loves the landscape around Around her and she adapts that to her writing and her writing is so intimate but also so huge on such a big scale there are worlds existing in Emily Bronte's head that we can't quantify there are so many characters that we don't even know about that were going on in her head that she was writing about every day and I think for me Emily's life comes down to her gondol writings and I loved seeing her poems in the exhibition this year and to get to see the things she was writing that were never meant to be seen by other people. Wuthering Heights is so deliberately a novel that is supposed to be published but Gondol and the world that she created in it is just for Emily and I think you see this best in Emily's 1845 diary paper where she talks about going on a trip to York with Anne where this world of Gondol, this world that they made up together and is a fantasy world based on the Yorkshire that Emily knew and loved comes to life in their heads where they become the characters. They're on this journey to a different place on their own for the first time and even though they are adults this almost childlike world exists between them something that makes them innocent and I think that is why I love the diary papers so much and why I love the poetry because it seems like an extension of Emily's character and I think this is why people often try and read Wuthering Heights in a biographical way. I love this description of Emily that was written by Charlotte's best friend Ellen Nussie which says 
On the top of a moor in a deep glen, Emily was a child in spirit for glee and enjoyment. A spell of mischief lurked in her on occasions when out on the moors. She enjoyed leading Charlotte where she would not dare to go of her own free will. Charlotte had a mortal dread of unknown animals, and it was Emily's pleasure to lead her into close vicinity, and then to tell her of how and of what she had done, laughing at her horror with great amusement. And we often see Emily as quite shy and reserved, and for me that is who she she is but I love getting this other glimpse of her how that isn't just her whole personality she actually has this wild mischievous side and I think that is why she continues to appeal to people because you hear about this young woman who hardly ventured from home but at the same time she went to Brussels and I love the account from Brussels where she wouldn't conform to everything that people wanted her to be her clothes didn't quite fit into Brussels society and her attitude was something that put people off but all she would reply was I wish to be as God made me and it is this determination to be who she is and to not conform to what society wants her to be that I think makes Wuthering Heights so progressive but at the same time makes it so deplorable to people and makes it a book that people can't help but love but also hate at the same time. It is the contradictions in Emily's personality that makes her so lovable but also so puzzling and I think for me it's the challenge to crack that puzzle to try and figure out who she was by the things we've got from her by these small fragments of writing that makes it so great to love her and to read her writing and get something new from it every single time you read them i also love the story about emily that charlotte replicates in my favorite bronte book shirley where emily was bitten by her dog which was a very big creature and if you go to the parsonage you can see its collar which is huge and if a dog wore that kind of collar now you would bring up the RSPCA and think it was cruel but this was a huge dog that was fierce and had a fight one day with a dog and Emily got bitten by it and it is said that she cauterized her own wound I can't imagine how painful that must be but I think it also shows her determination which comes through in anything she does whether it is the domestic tasks that she carries out or in the things she writes or in just the things we know about her personality from the things that are said about her. Whilst we celebrate Emily as this amazing figure of feminism, I also think it's important to celebrate the more feminine aspects of her character. For example, the fact that she loved household duties and she took it upon her to make the bread, to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. And I love that about her and how you can at once be everything that a woman should be in Victorian society, but also be something completely different that breaks the mould. And again, it's that contradiction in her personality. Someone who is writing using a male pseudonym, who has written a book that has been cast off as morally reprehensible and really awful because of its talk of Satan and hell and characters who say they are shunning heaven and actually want to spend their time after they're dead on earth because that's where they belong and yet Emily also spends a lot of time at home doing the mundane tasks and you wonder how someone can be both at the same time but she is and I think that is what we should celebrate about her. Another thing I loved looking at from much later in Emily's life just before she died was the Wuthering Heights reviews that she kept in her writing books and I think out of all the collection all the Bronte artifacts that the Parsonage own my favourite are the three writing boxes that are so intimate and so personal to the sisters it's where they would have written their books from and you can't imagine that now in a modern age where we write using computers and we have lots of resources to sit down with a box that was portable that could be moved from room to room that they would have always had with them that they would have been working from and I loved Emily's how she has these reviews in them some of them are really bad reviews some are really good reviews. So alongside the cutouts of the reviews, Sally Wainwright, who actually wrote and directed Talk Invisible, which is my favourite adaptation of the Brontes' lives, wrote, but how did Emily respond to the criticisms? 
In choosing to preserve the reviews, did she accept the criticisms and try to make sense of them, or did she rise above them, able to recognise them as lacking a robust imaginative response to her work? And I love how this has been curated and how you get these responses. For example, for Emily's poem, you also have a poem response to it and other responses within the exhibition. And I think it is that look and thinking, how do we view Emily Bronte now? And how has she been viewed throughout time? And how is that changing? And I think the exhibition gives a perfect response to that. So I've been talking for a while now about what Emily means to me but I still don't feel like I've got an answer and I think that's just how I like it. I don't ever want to have a definitive answer about what Emily means to me because as I change as a person and as I grow as a person my perception of Emily changes with that and I think that's the way she has to be viewed as an extension of ourselves and that's how she will always be. So the Making Thunder Raw exhibition runs right up until the 1st of January 2019 so plenty of time to visit if you would like to. I would highly recommend it even if this video wasn't sponsored I'd still recommend going to you because it is amazing to look at these objects in the flesh and to see them in front of your eyes and to really put the Brontes lives into context. I'd love to know in the comments what Emily Bronte means to you and maybe your image of Emily doesn't fit mine, maybe it does and that is what I'm really interested to find out if my concept of Emily is similar to yours. So thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys soon. Happy reading!